gets preached. When uh, Jesus asks, because he asked Peter three times, do you love me? So the first two times, in the Greek, it uses this word agape. Okay? But then the third time, it uses this word phileo. And what they say is that, well, the agape is really like, a much lesser type of a love, kind of like a friendship love, like not as, as strong. But that phileo, that's like a really um, intense, like a, like a really strong type of a love is what they'll say. So the first two times he's kind of using this agape, like, oh, do you love me? Do you love me? But then the third time he's, he uses that word phileo and that really hits Peter. And that's why he's so sorry and, and grieved that Jesus even used, you know, now he used this word phileo. Because when Peter answers them, he uses that word phileo every time. But then when, when Jesus asks the third time, it's that word phileo. And in English, it only says love, so we don't get to know these, you know, this special hidden meaning behind this. And, and because I know the Greek and because I've looked at this, I'm going to tell you, look, you know, this is why he got upset. But even just in the regular Greek, in, in the English reading, why did Peter get upset? Why was he grieved? The Bible tells us. It says in verse 17, he said unto him the third time. Now, if he's saying something different, first of all, if he's saying something different, is he saying it the third time? No, because he would say the first thing two times, and then he said something different the third time. He's saying the same thing. That's why it says the third time, but let's keep reading. To Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? It's not because he said phileo. It's because he said to him the third time, because he's asking him the same question three times in a row. And he's already told him, you know I love you. That's why he's grieved. That's why it's upsetting to him because he keeps asking him the same question. He's saying, look, do you love me? And if Jesus is asking him the same question over and over again, it's going to make you think, well, he's not really believing my answer. Because why would he keep asking me if he didn't believe me the first time? That's why he gets grieved. And that's the point Jesus is trying to make. He's making a bunch of points here. But just to even further pr disprove this stupidity of, of, oh, this agape and phileo, you know, agape is a lesser love and phileo is a greater love. Okay, I looked up when those words are actually used. By using the, the, you know, the Strong's um, Dictionary and, the, and the, the Concordance to find out where these words are used. So here are the verses in English. Let's look at a couple. Um, if you want to, you can flip back. We're going to be in Matthew for most of these. Flip back to Matthew 6. Um, we're going to see if this stands up. If that, that usage of agape is, is, if we apply it all throughout. Because it would have to be applied. I mean, if the word means something different, Right? Then you should, you should be able to apply it throughout the scripture. Matthew 6, verse 5. I'm sorry. So th this is, we're, now we're looking at phileo. These are examples of phileo. This is, this is like the really intense, strong type of a love. Okay? Matthew 6, verse 5 says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. So that real strong, like that real emotional strong type of a love that's how the how the hypocrites love standing in a synagogue they're saying like that's how much they really love that it seems kind of silly to me that you would use um, if that's what that word really means I mean if it's if it's just that type of a strong thing it's so much different than agape what he's saying then would be that these hypocrites love standing in the synagogues in the corners of the streets that may be seen of men that like, that's that intense love that they have. Now look, if they say they love that, sure. Men love that because you like to, to receive the adoration. You like to receive the looks and, and, the, and you know, the accolades by people. But you're not going to convince me that they just love that so much and it's just such this strong type of a bond type of a love with something like that. You're not going to convince me that that's what that has to mean there. Matthew 23, verse 6, says a similar thing. In Matthew 23, 6, he's talking to the Pharisees. He says, And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. Again, that's that real intense love that Jesus used with Peter, right? That made him so grieved is the same love of loving the uppermost rooms at feasts. So when you go to a bank, when you go to a dinner, and they give you the best room, like, Man, I love this so much. Like, this is the best thing in the whole world. I, I don't think so. I don't see that in that verse. 
Um, Revelation 22, 15. You don't have to turn there. Turn if you would to Matthew 22. Um, Revelation 22, 15 says, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Again, that word phileo, that's supposed to be that really strong meaning of the word love, is used here as someone loving and making a lie. I don't know anybody that loves to lie with that type of an intensity, if that's really what that means. I mean, you could have people that, yeah, they like to lie, they like, you know, whatever, but it's to give it that type of a weight and, and say it's such a different type of a word is ridiculous. Now we're going to look in Matthew 22, verse 37. This is, these are other uses of agape. Now this is that lesser love that they say that, that Jesus was using with Peter. In verse 37 of Matthew 22, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Is there much of a stronger love than with all of your soul and with all of your heart and with all of your mind? I don't think it exists. Yet that's where they use agape. That's where they use this verse. So in, in the last place is Luke eleven forty three says, Woe unto you Pharisees, for you love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. So in one in Matthew it's using Phileo, and in Luke it's using Agape for the same exact verse. The same exact thing. What does that tell you? They mean the same thing. What does that tell you? You get the same exact meaning in English that you do in Greek. They both mean love. That's the bottom line. They both mean love. And anything, any words that might have some slight nuance or variation in a meaning, you are going to be able to infer that from the context. 